All right, how are you again, folks? Uh, another video on UPM copy, and uh, let's try to look at uh, doing an edge trace on something. So I got this little piece of wood. It's got a cutout in it from doing some previous work. Let's try to copy the outside edge of that guy. Throw it down on top of our white background box again. Uh, we can see the edge of it kind of showing up in the image here. Uh, we completed doing some PID setup on our velocity controls tab just a little bit ago. So now let's uh, jog over the item and see if we can uh, get it set up to do an edge detection and trace. Um, first thing we'll do is uh, switch it over to our composite output view. Um, so now we're no longer going to want to be looking at conto contours, so let's go to the detection tab, turn that off, and turn on lines. And again, you have to kind of get right over the edge of an object for lines to be detected. Um, so again, you can see how the mask snaps to the edge and lines are shown when they're found. Um, we've got a little bit of a messy edge here. Again, this is a piece of wood against a white background, so it's got a lot of fuzzy edges and things that kind of throw off the edge detection. But let's see if we're going to work around that. Um, let's play with our canny edge detectors a little bit. We can get kind of a stronger looking line along the edge there. Uh, playing with the thickness, they go away too quickly. Um, so again, right now we're looking uh, the raw image, we've got the mask shown, um, that's the yellow outline in the composite output. The gray and blurred image, you can see you can play with the blurring a little bit. So this object here, being it's a, a light wood on a white background, we don't want to do a lot of blurring. Um, candy edges are a mess and composite output shows lines all over the place. So this isn't really gonna work too well for us. So let's try something a little different. Let's, on the video controls, select use color detection instead of edges. Um, then we'll wanna look at the HSV output tab. And when you start out, it'll be all white, but what you're gonna do is start playing with the sliders here and, and have it uh, filter out edges based on the color So there we can kind of start getting a representation of the edge of the item in a different color space. And this will be what we try to travel along. It's a little finicky to try to get it set up. Um, we're obviously picking up some of the shadows. We've got the edge of the wood. You just kind of have to play with the sliders a little bit. There is no definite right or wrong. It's all dependent on what you're trying to find again. So there we kind of got rid of some of the shadows using the, the hue value. And we can kind of strengthen up the edges of the color of the wood. And there we've got a pretty well-defined edge of the wood there that we can hopefully try to follow. Let's go back to composite output and see what we find. So now by switching from just a standard uh, edge detector to something based on color, we can get a fairly solid detection of the edge that we can hopefully travel along. So let's uh, go back to our mask. You can kind of see how if I uh, decrease this value here, the mask slows down and if I up it quite a bit, see how the mask starts moving around quite a lot. So we want to dampen it out a little bit, especially since we don't have a good edge detection that's very stable. And let's slow it down a little bit. So now we're basically ready. We've got an edge found. We've got a red dot at each end. So UCAM copy is ready to try traveling along that edge that we're detecting. We've got a velocity set here. Again, we've got our PIDs that we set prior. Uh, last thing you're going to want to do is tell it to record to a DXF and 
set the distance between samples you want to record. Um, this is in units of inches or millimeters, so every 50 thousandths of an inch, it'll sample a point and record to the DXF as it's set up currently. So let's give it a whirl. We enable velocity. It's starting to travel along there. Um, it's kind of all over the place and uh, not well behaved. So um, let's jog it back so we've got our edge detected. Let's go back to our velocity controls and let's knock KP way down. I think we've got too high of a value here, even though it worked for contour detections. It's not quite going to work out for our line detection. All we've done is we've turned off velocity, changed our KP value, let's re-enable it and let's see what happens. So now we're chugging along a fair bit better, we're tracking along the edge, oops, and we got off the edge a little bit. So it'll be expected that when you're doing something, let's reorient the mask a little bit. You can see here that the detection is kind of going off into the weeds because of the, the colors are very distinct with this. So we'll go back to the video controls by playing with the sliders here a little bit. Kind of able to get it back on track since the image color changed a little bit. Let's re-enable it and let's see what happens. Now we're trucking along the edge, even though it's not a very clean edge. The colors aren't very distinct, and there's not a good solid edge and a shadow. But it's trucking along there, so let's see how it does. So it fell off the edge again. Let's just nudge it back into position and see if it will start. So you can see it's it's following along a little bit of a shadow or a blob. Actually, that's the, the dot that we use for calibration. So we'll just kind of move past that. Turn off your velocity, jog it past that problem spot, let the edges get detected again, and re-enable. Let's see what happens. And it's making pretty good progress around this edge. You can see it's got a lot of fuzzies. And, um, we're, we're on wood, so it has its own wood grain. Um, so despite that, it, it's, it's actually doing a pretty good job. And you are going to probably have to help it out every now and then. Get back on track. And like I say, let's, let's adjust the values down here again. Oops. Uh, I jogged with the key instead of activating the slider. What I was attempting to do was just adjust the slider using the arrow keys a little bit. So as you can see, by uh, readjusting the sliders again, I get a better detection of the colors. Again, I don't have a good lighting setup, so the, the shadows and the colors are changing a little bit as I go around the item. Uh, we'll re-enable that, and let's see if we can complete the lap. Again, we're kind of getting off into the weeds. There as I narrow up, I get a real close band where it follows the color along that edge. Now we've got some progress going. And again, that should be expected. You're gonna to have to play a lot with lighting and focus and uh, the colors that are being detected and everything else to get it, depending on what you're trying to scan and your camera and everything else. So there is no easy button setting, unfortunately, but uh, with a little experimentation, I think you'll be able to get something that works. So there, I think we've pretty much made a lap around this. Let's go to our DXF control tab and let's save our item. 
and we'll just call it uh, scan one here. And it tells you it saved that file to uh, the plugins directory within UCNC, a folder called UCAM copy and uh, output, and then the file that you titled it. And let's see if we can bring up and look at that real quick and just see what we got for an output, if it's anything worth using. So again, we go to open a file. And on this computer, UCNC, our plugins, UCAM copy folder, the output. And we want to open up Scan1DXF. Hey, look at that. So there's our, our item we got scanned. We've got a couple of blips here where we went off into the weeds, but overall it, uh, it follows the outline of the, the item we were scanning and it may do with all the fuzzy edges and everything else. So um, again, it's not perfect, but as an initial trial, it should give you an idea of, of what UCAM copies capable of doing with a little bit of work and set up. So thanks for watching.